Today, let's pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs, who had an unclean spirit, met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you, by God, do not torment me. Jesus had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about two thousand rushed down a steep bank into the sea, where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in the town and throughout the countryside, and people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind, and they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But he would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him. And all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. This is what yesterday's Gospel read after Jesus was rejected by his fellow countrymen. Good morning. Good Monday and may you have a good start to the week. God grants us this new week to go on listening to his word. So let's be thankful for this special privilege. During this week, we'll try to delve deeper into Sunday's gospel. There's a lot to comment on and a great deal of learning to gain. Both Jesus and his fellow countrymen's attitudes are surprising. After marveling at Jesus driving out the unclean spirits and after praising him, The people in the synagogue tried to hurl him off of a cliff. Wasn't that too much? Why didn't Jesus take advantage of the situation and say something that didn't inspire such a feeling of rejection? Did he really know that he was going to be rejected? Shouldn't he have been more diplomatic, more politically correct? What is it that caused such public outrage if people were so amazed at him? How could people love Jesus one minute? and hate him the next? These are the questions we'll try to answer throughout the week. Today's gospel is long to comment on, and we don't have much time. That is why I'm going to focus on a couple of ideas that have to do with the rejection we have to cope with at times. When things are not what we want them to be, as it happened to Jesus himself so many times. The first point is that happiness has adversaries that we need to know about. The evil one doesn't want us to be happy, and at the same time, the world invents illusory happiness for us, placing obstacles on our path that hinder us from finding true happiness. Today's glimpses of the gospel again shows us a demon who tells lies. He wants to make Jesus believe that he is just one demon, whereas in reality, there are many demons. He speaks in the singular, but when Jesus asks for his name, 
The evil spirit answers, Legion is my name. There are many of us. The evil spirit always deceives us. It is always deceiving us deep in our hearts to make us err on the path of happiness so that we actually continue being stuck and mired where we are, living in so-called graves, in dead places, and sometimes even harming ourselves. The deception of the devil can lead us even to that. He distances us from others by making us believe that taking care of our own affairs is best. And finally we get to the point where no one wants to approach us anymore. The devil wants us to be sad and discouraged. He wants us to reject what's good. The second area I want to focus on is powerful, but it's a fact. When something good is done, it is not always well received. Notice this. Jesus does good, but they throw him out of town. Isn't that strange? Everyone who was there saw the good that Jesus did, and yet, what was it that ended up being the most important thing for the people of that place and for this world? The usual. The money god. People could not bear the loss of 2,000 pigs. The value of the pigs is more important than the fact that this man had been freed from impure spirits. The world and certain people may be perceived as very good until they hit your pocket. Didn't this ever happen to you? You served in a place, in a job, until what dominated the decision was the expense you caused. This happens every day. It is the perverse law of the world, and it happens in many of our environments. Unfortunately, money is sometimes the primary boss. Let us be careful with the deceptions of the evil one who tries to make us happy in his own way, who tries to make us take shortcuts that lead us nowhere, and who tries to make us live our lives feeling discouraged. Let's be careful with this lying world, which sympathizes and loves us until we generate an expense, because from there we become just another number, a number that subtracts or adds, but a number, not a person. For Jesus, we are people who have dignity, and that is why he asks the man to return to his home and family, to restore broken bonds. May we have a good day, and may the blessing of our merciful God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain forever.